as one of the practices we have always done, and maybe you didn't know, is everything is date stamped. So if Mr. Kavanaugh right. looked that up on the third and it came in, everything, as soon as it comes in and it's open address and birth, should be date stamped. And then that protects you as to when you get it, and then we, when we actually get it, because we're going by what the date says, and there's no stamp on there. So uh, you should maybe do that. Yeah, that's no problem. Okay? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Just to go back to the actual motion itself, I just want to clarify that to make sure that these these days that seem to be at issue, they're days that he actually had accrued. They're not days that he, so throughout these 41 years that he worked here, these are days he actually had accrued. Mm -hmm. So they're not days that he got extra or anything like that, they're just days that he, while he was working here, chose not to work them, they're actually days that he, but he had some of them, correct? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's like if it's being treated as earned time before you take the vacation and sick time from the contract. That is what it's in the contract. Yeah, but well, there's a crew day. Vote against it then. Right. It's called a motion. Oh. Yeah, there's a discussion as to why. So we're discussing the same thing over. Listen, over. What, what, excuse me, what, what happens is you set a precedent, which is what's being said, that from here on in, you are now. The contract then, how you have a contract for what? If you that new contract just started in January, it's been for five years. So uh, if you're doing this for someone or for anyone, it's going to be for everyone down the road. So if it isn't addressed, you're going to have this uh, um, amount of time that is not in the contract you pay in the way it's being paid. Do you understand? I mean, we either put, I mean, the cap and the amount was paid was put there for a reason at the time it was negotiated. So that's what the negotiation was about. That started in January, and in six months, this person's retiring, and we don't call that portion of the contract. So then you're, to me, and I'm going to ask you to my opinion on that is then, doesn't that open it to say something about any other part of the contract? What? How can you just pick and choose a certain section you want to change? Mr. Kokanen? Question. <laughs> uh, Ms. Smith, can you just please clarify your question just so I hear it? Sorry. I'm sorry? Can you just clarify your question? Okay. In, in the contract, who's my best friend? section of the contract where it says for um, sick time and how it's paid, they can, accumulate, they can accumulate one day for every month, so it's 12 sick days a year. It can accumulate up to, I believe it's 175 um, days. That is capped at that end um, and the amount of $4,000. So he has over that amount of those days. So that's that means, like, I have his letter in front of me, but let's say 30 some days, 34 days, whatever it is. Um, once you use it to, to take off, then that, that makes it a vacation day. That's not a sick. In the contract, it says it must be used as sick time. So the rest of it then would be paid out as the contract says, which is capped at 175, 4,000, 25 dollars, I think comes out per day reach that amount. Those other days above that, how, how is that then used for just time off? Well, what, what we have before us, and Mr. Subi, correct me if I'm wrong, is an agreement, essentially a letter agreement to settle that, independent of the contract. Uh, I don't believe that the collective bargaining union was protesting that, so it's an agreement. So, correct, Mr. Subi. Well, but we had an employee retire last year, and he followed the same procedures as that in So then, that's what I'm saying, we're setting a precedent that anyone retired can do that. They can take that part of the contract and ask for a special allowance for it, if you want to call it that. Is that what you're saying? Was it we agree to it, yes. Mr. Cicero. Yes. Mr. Kerner. Yes. Mr. 
This is Miss Granville. Yes. Mrs. Ryerson. No. Mr. Parker. Yes. Mr. Peppertown. Yes. Mr. Sanford. No. Mrs. Smith. No. Motion passes by three. Next we have 10B, a motion to approve. Actually, this is how we want to work this. Well, it just, it, it is, uh, it says it's contingent on the swings passing the insurance. And, uh, Does that still matter? I mean, we just heard a report from the engineer that's saying that we shouldn't... Well, the issue with the swings that I saw was the ESSEL stop. And it's just replacing an ESSEL. Well, if we, if we say this motion as is, if the swings are salvageable, then we don't have a problem. Changes to motion to approve demolition of the playground structure in Williamson Park. Marsville Borough Public Works employees will perform the demolition of work that is required. We'll remove that whole sentence entirely. As recommended by the Borough Engineer. As recommended by Gilmore and Associates. And our insurance company? Yes. Any, or may I have a motion? So moved. Raymond, I'll guess I'll put the back there. Okay. <laughs> certainly a disappointing thing. Yes. Do you have any questions or comments on the motion? Okay. One day. The people that originally built the playground, they have um, invested money in two money towards that playground, they have the um, spindles that have their family's names on them. When you tear down the playground at the time of the demolition, I think it would be nice that the families that put that money out for those spindles and whatever other things that they put into it should receive those back. So if we could, when it's being demoed, those those railings be put aside. I think they can be put aside right now because well, we were planning on that. The people donated that money and they should receive that. Uh, if I could also say there's a, um, there's a plaque on there in front of me that should be removed, saved, maybe incorporated somewhere in the playground <coughs> further down the road. Um, and I was told that there is a time capsule in one of the postings. I'm not sure. You could probably ask Ann Milanos about that because she told me she was there when that was built. So, there might be a couple of things that you want to take out of that structure, find out where it's located. It might be marked, I'm not sure, but there's something inside the post, yes. Don't forget that it's actually rebuilt because it caught fire. So it may be gone. Oh, okay. But just like, you know, it's there while we're demolishing it. Oh, okay. Oh, thanks, Carol. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 8-0. 10C, we have a motion to approve a resolution to have the borough engineer, Gilmore and Associates, apply for an ARLP grant. I have that here if you'd like me to read it. Yeah, I will. <laughs> a resolution of borough council of the borough of Morrisville, Bucks County, Pennsylvania, authorizing the request to apply for the automated red light enforcement program grant through the Department of Transportation and designated offic designating officials to execute documents in furtherance of this request. Whereas, the Council of the Borough of Marsville is interested in pursuing grant funds through the Automated Red Light Enforcement Program, known as the grant, through the Department of Transportation, and whereas the grant would be utilized to replace existing regulatory signs new, with new regulatory signs to meet the minimum retro reflectivity requirements, also known as the project, and whereas, the Council of the Borough of Mars still wishes to appoint officials to execute documents in furtherance of applying for the grant. And now, therefore, be it resolved that by the authority of the Marsville Borough Council, that the Borough of Marsville and the County of Bucks, it is hereby resolved by authority of the same that Robert C. Subi, Borough Manager, or Frederick P. Kerner, Council President, be authorized and directed to sign the Automatic Red Light Enforcement Program funding 
project funding agreement on its behalf, adopted and resolved this 20th day of June, 2016, in council chambers. Now I have a motion. Second. And Corinne, any questions on this motion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 8-0. Next we have 10 D, a motion to approve use of necessary funds to cover engineering costs for full accreditation of the levy, which I believe <coughs> we should spell with two E's, not a Y. That's correct. Right. Yeah. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Corinne and Debbie, any discussion on this motion? Do we have any idea how much that's going to be? <laughs> well, we're going to move in stages. Uh, the first, the engineering, why we asked for this appropriation. We did have funds set aside for engineering, I mean, for costs to repair levies and um, to, for tree removal, things like that. And um, the accreditation, from what I'm told, is going to be in the like, $15,000 range. However, to move forward with uh, FEMA, FEMA, and Army Corps engineers, we have to have accreditation first. Uh, so uh, we will move slowly on this just to make sure uh, that we get the most bang for our buck. However, I think this is um, a direction to move to protect our park and to protect the homeowners from any potential floods. So this would be capped out at 15,000. There's no way to go above 15,000? That's just the engineer. Yeah, that's right. Because when you say for full accreditation, this is just the engineering costs, correct? Yes. Okay. Any further questions or comments? But yeah, let me ask this again. You're saying that 15,000 is for engineering costs. Does that mean that we have, that once the engineering costs are completed, that is the accreditation? Uh, no, it's not. It's not. It's just, it's just right. That is to put ourselves in, in a position Become to be, yes, and that's the decision um, to move forward with FEMA to accredit that levy. As from the federal government, they do not know that that levy exists. So to be able to have grant funding available to us, we need to start moving forward to get the levy accredited. And I'm not saying that it's exactly 15,000. Maybe we will move forward if, if it's... I understand all this. All I want is this, so that the wrong impression isn't gathered, is that the 15,000 or those costs somewhere is around that for the engineering doesn't mean that the levy will be, will be accredited. It is still, we still may have to move forward with other costs and other work. That, that is right? correct. Thank you. Do you know a timing for this for the engineer? I do not. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions? There's a lot that goes into this procedure. They have to actually bore into the levy itself to see what it's made of. Being that it was built in 1930, uh, we don't really know what's in there. So, um, I mean, you could take a shovel and start digging, however, they have a way that they could determine the strength and durability by doing core samples and um, if uh, the council believes that we should move forward into this accreditation. Um, I was, they was told to me that that would be in the $15,000 range to start setting forward to obtain these FEMA grants and DEP grants and, and Army Corps engineer grants. Any other questions? Mr. Kern. Yes. Ms. Granville. Yes. Mrs. Larison. Yes. Mr. Parker. Yes. Mr. Pepita. Yes. Mr. Sanford. Yes. Mrs. Smith. Yes. Mr. Cicero. Yes. Passes 8 0. 10 E now, we have a motion to approve a resolution to have the borough engineer, Gilmore and Associates, apply for the DCED Greenways, Trails, and Recreation <coughs> Program grant that will be used for the demolition of the MR Writer School, originally submitted June 2015. Um, I have that if you want me to read it, or since we 
submit the year ago? Is everyone familiar enough? And a little explanation is why we're doing that. Uh, uh, due to the fact that we had a non-budget last year in the state, um, they're just actually looking to award grants now on behalf of the 2015 budget. Um, however, it was under the impression of our engineer that um, due to the fact of conflicting budgets <laughs> coincided, it's our best bet to reapply so that um, they reaward it, we would still be in, in um, an opportunity to obtain that grant for MR writers. So I have a motion for Ted, but I don't think I ever got a second. 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 I'm going to let Ted. Okay. Any further discussion on the grant? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 8 0. Next we have 11 announcements. Um, that, I'm sorry, can I ask you something first? Before we get to the announcements, sure. I'm going to bring some up when we can run the new business right now. Whether we do it today or do it soon. Um, I spoke with Mr. Suki about uh, bonding because I've been asking about the bond for Mr. Bates. And um, I understand that it was given to um, Mr. Kukani's office. They were looking into it. I haven't heard anything about it. Um, whether we, it have, we have not received it. Oh, you did not receive it? No. Oh, I just wanted to finish Oh. oh, I'm sorry. So you, you gave a response to the phone? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Did you give a bad message? And I thought I relayed that message to you, Mrs. Smith, about that. Um, that is covers fraud or theft and not. Um, Errors and omissions? Yes. Uh, okay, so you. Oh, it's in trouble, what happened? You sent a letter, but just didn't get disseminated to us, right? Well, actually, to tell you the truth, I have not reached this. We're in the process of still getting uh, the fine answer from Melissa. However, it was relayed to me from Melissa the situation that we cannot use that bond as repayment for the fines that we obtained. Okay. All right. Well, then the second part of this is. Um, we, in our ordinance, took out the amount of money to bond the manager, and we spoke about this, Mr. Su Su um, so we have to place a vote on an amount of money for a bond for you, because that was taken out, and then the ordinance, when we changed it last year, it states that at the time of hiring the manager, you will then set the amount for the bond, so we have to set a bond for you. Well, it's actually, it's not on me, it's on the position. Okay, well, well, yeah, but I'm saying we don't have one, right? Correct? Yes, we do. Well, how, what was the amount we voted on? That's what I'm saying. I was under the assumption that it came with the position. And it was brought to our insurance company, and they based it on my, uh, I believe, my salary. <laughs> we have we have it's a hundred thousand dollar bond and that's how I was told that that's how we, we have a position on behalf of the position, not the employee himself. Okay, so right now the insurance company allowed a hundred thousand dollar bond on that position that the manager position. Yeah, Mr. Smith, that happened the first week I was here. I mean if, if you like I could get details of how that occurred. I, I'm However, just, I thought it was an automatic type. Well, the only reason I'm saying is because our ordinance changed. So the, in the ordinance, it stated how much? It was $25,000 for, for a manager. It was automatically Man, Managers are required to be bonded by the borough code. But we don't have to vote the expenditure? That's what no, I'm saying. that's automatic. Uh, you may have to vote the expenditure. Well, that's what I'm asking. That's what I'm thinking. I know that's good. I think it's, the amount. I, I've never... I mean, the first thing a manager does when they're hired is that they contingent upon any agreement that they're bonded. That's everyone's That's the idea that it was changed. I mean, I, I, don't know why the, I don't know why the borough wouldn't want to have their manager bonded. But, but I'm saying we didn't follow the ordinance, and the ordinance says we have to vote the amount. So we have to put the amount in. We have to state the amount. Let's, let's we have to state it for next meeting. Okay. If he's not bonded, let's get him bonded. Okay. No, I am bonded. Okay. Well, I'm not the position. 
position is. Right. Well, then just clarify that ordinance then, because it was taken out the amount. That uh, last Wednesday we had the county commissioners meeting here. Um, it was uh, related back to me. They were very appreciative of us uh, having them here, and I believe the meeting went very well. And I think it goes a long way on behalf of the courtesy of Morrisville Borough and its residents that uh, we had them here, and they truly appreciate it. Thank you. Very nice. We have no more borough officials. We'll move on to 13 adjournment. May I have a motion? Can I have a second? Second. Second. Kevin Debbie? That's the most unenthusiastic adjournment I think I've ever heard. All those in favor say aye. 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 Aye